flashback to WWDC 2021 and tech Twitter and tech YouTube was livid, like borderline apoplectic that iPadOS 15 didn't deliver any new features that took advantage of the M1 chipset that Tim Cook had mission improbable into it just two months before. Flash forward to WWDC 2022 and tech Twitter and tech YouTube are every bit as livid as borderline apoplectic that iPadOS 16 has just delivered exactly that kind of feature, a feature that requires M1. Stage manager. It's a new multitasking, multi-windowing experience for the Mac and for iPads with Mac level hardware with M1. And I know that's beyond frustrating, maddening even, for people without an M1 iPad. To my family and friends, because almost none of them have an M1 iPad, and no one likes to feel left behind. No one, especially when it's a feature that feels truly game-changing. There's denial and anger and bargaining, what ifs, so many what ifs, and I will get to them, I promise. But first, I want to address why Stage Manager actually needs that Mac level hardware to begin with. I mean, the very specific reasons. And one of them, one of the major ones is RAM. Up until now, iPadOS and its iOS foundations just had no concept of virtual memory, of swapping pages to disk. All apps, all documents, all everything were just live and full screen back in the day. So the goal was just to keep the app that you were using utterly and completely responsive. And eventually, any app you switched back to immediately available and ready to go as well. Because on a Mac with a mouse or a trackpad, you can handle a certain amount of latency, of lag, of hiccups. But on an iPad with a finger, with multi-touch, if everything isn't instant, if the direct manipulation fails at all, if you touch and it doesn't go, it just, it ruins the experience. It shatters the whole entire illusion. And Apple was savage about maintaining that. If there was ever any memory pressure at all, if any app you were using or process that you had in the background ever ate up too much, Jetsum would just yoke whatever else it needed to. The system would literally kill anything non-current to free that memory back up. And then over time, we got split screen and slide over and picture in picture and iPad OS and developers had to figure out how to play nicely with up to four apps all live at the same time. But Jetson was still there, still lurking, still ready to MDK anything it had to to keep those apps alive. But now with iPad OS 16 and Stage Manager, it needs to be able to do that with up to eight apps at the same time. And not just super lightweight apps either, but heavy hitters like Ferrite and Procreate and Photoshop. And fun fact, when Adobe was first porting Photoshop to the iPad, they had to go back and plunder the original version just to get something, something that would fit in the very, very small, tiny memory footprint of most iPads. And so when you start dealing with the potential of up to eight apps, all needing to be live and ready to go immediately, that just needs a ton of memory. Not only the eight or 16 gigabytes, but the advanced memory compression ultra fast storage controllers and the super speedy SSDs that come with M1 so it can actually do all of that swapping like a Mac does. iPadOS 16 adds support for virtual memory swap, meaning your iPad storage can be used to expand the available memory for all apps and delivers up to 16 gigabytes of memory to the most demanding apps. But also all the GPU and CPU power that M1 provides so it can keep all of those apps and windows not just up to date, but up to the millisecond as you touch them or draw on them. Again, to maintain the feeling of direct manipulation that the iPad thrives on, to maintain that experience. Plus the USB 4 and Thunderbolt 3 IO controllers on the M1, so you can connect to an external display for a full external display experience and with enough throughput to keep those apps feeling just as alive, just as responsive, even with the intermediation of a keyboard and trackpad or mouse. So. Yes, all of us nerds got our wish. We got more Mac-like functionality on the iPad. It just requires Mac-like hardware to pull it off. And I know, I know some of you are gonna say, or already saying, already commenting, they put the A12Z in the Apple Silicon Developer Kit. So certainly that must be capable as well. And 
Yes, they did with 16 gigabytes of RAM running Mac OS and the Mac's full-on memory management and windowing system. And even then it didn't do it very well or for very long, RIP. And I know some of you are gonna say, then why not provide a limited experience at least on A12Z, even A12X iPads? You know, figure something out like last year with live text where over the course of the summer, Apple took the always on zero impact neural engine implementation from M1 and made an only on demand with CPU impact version for Intel. But that kind of already exists for A series iPads with split view, slide over and picture in picture, which lets you do a ton of multi-windowing already, just not stacked in the same design with a ton of iPads that have widely disparate levels of RAM, CPU, GPU, and nothing close to the same level of storage or IO controller. And if by some miracle they could, even highly constrained, it would just make A10X owners even angrier. Like why not us as well? Why not A15 or 14 or 13? Because it really truly sucks when you're on the other side of any given feature line, no matter where that line is even if sometimes that line is the only thing that allows the feature to exist. And this, I mean, this is just something that we've all been going through forever. When any whiz bang new feature comes to a new device, Apple gets accused of holding it back to force upgrades. And when a whiz bang new feature gets crammed onto an older device, Apple gets accused of artificially weighing things down to force an upgrade. But the truth is Apple engineers and performance teams all have family members running all of those older devices. Hell, they run those older devices themselves. So they try really, really hard to make new features, even and especially the new whiz bang ones run as well as they can and as for far back as they can. And sometimes they can figure it out and sometimes they can't. And when some genius dev figures out how to hack it back, we all get to see just how horribly it actually performs. Like when video recording was indie ported from the iPhone 3GS to the iPhone 3 and could only manage like 10 to 12 frames per second. Nothing Apple could or would ever ship. And yes, all of this really has been going on all of this long, which is why I get it. I totally get it. And by all means, please advocate for what you want. Scream it from the rooftops, the social networks. Just keep your expectations within the limits of known time and space within the practical realities of the hardware and the software that runs on it. Or, you know, get out and help push by learning computer science, neural networks, machine learning, and algorithms. And fine, I'll do it myselfing the whole problem away in iPadOS 18 with Brilliant, the online interactive STEM learning platform and today's sponsor. Brilliant's got a growing catalog of courses, including math, physics, logic, science, quantum mechanics, game theory, and so much more all specifically crafted to help you learn concepts by working through them yourself in visual hands-on ways. And all the lessons are thoughtfully broken up into bite-sized pieces so you can learn at your own pace, zero pressure, no pressure. Like if you wanted to learn to code, but have always been put off by all the overly complicated traditional computer programming courses, well, Brilliant has actual fun, interactive challenges that let you shift around blocks of pseudocode, receive immediate feedback and get results. You feel like you're solving puzzles, even gaming, but the whole entire time you're learning how algorithms work. And once you know that, coding becomes way less intimidating and way more accessible. Because here's the thing, here's the secret. Everyone, everyone starts somewhere and you can get started right now, today, for free. Just visit brilliant.org slash Richie or click the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Just click the button on the screen or go to brilliant.org slash Richie. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so does hitting up this video for even more on WWDC and everything that was announced. Just hit up the video and I'll see you there.